back in the kitchen making mayonnaise. And I know I already have a video out there where I make mayonnaise, but this is going to be a little better. So I have to have my glasses on. I have a wide mouth one pint canning jar. This is a ball jar and you need a wide mouth because you're going to be using an immersion blender and it needs to fit in. And the regular mouth ball jars won't work. So I need one cup of total oil. So I'm using avocado oil. I like Chosen brand because it doesn't have an avocado taste. It's a very mild and it's not going to turn the mayonnaise green. So we need three quarters of a cup of avocado oil. Then we need a quarter of a cup of MCT or C8. This is a C8 product that we used to manufacture and sell. We no longer manufacture it, but we still have some left that we use for ourselves. Um, if you don't want to use C8 or MCT oil, use one cup of avocado oil. Just to say, uh, Olive oil, if you're going to use olive oil, use light olive oil that doesn't have a lot of taste. If you use regular olive oil, the, the taste will be uh, too much. It's too strong of a taste. So if you're going to use olive oil, get light olive oil. And to that, you add a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and a, tea, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Get the apple cider vinegar with the mother in it. This happens to be Nature's Promise. I like Bragg's um, also. So one tablespoon. Then this is different than my first video. I also use Dijon mustard. When you buy Dijon mustard, make sure it does not have sugar in it. I used to use Grey Poupon. And then I read the ingredient list and Grey Poupon has sugar in it. So this is just a store brand Dijon mustard. And I, I don't really measure, I just do a squirt. That's probably a quarter to a half a teaspoon. Um, then you need one egg. And I also add a teaspoon of collagen. We use Great Lakes collagen. Um, it's the green container, which the orange container is gelatin, the green container is collagen. And now I will be very careful when using uh, immersion blenders. I don't plug mine in until I'm ready to use it. So what you do is you place it all the way down in the bottom and once it starts emulsifying, you, you start bringing it up. So so this is all emulsified now. Be very careful, as I say, if you have my uh, immersion blender, I can unhook it here. So I unhook it. If yours doesn't, then unplug it. Unplug it before, and now you have to use your fingers. I haven't found anything that I can use instead of my fingers to get all of the mayonnaise. Uh, we have had people who have been, have been rushed to the emergency room because they forgot to unplug it before using their fingers, so some comments we've got on other videos is, oh, do you really have to do that? And it's like, yes. You'd be surprised how many people, especially when you're cooking and you just forget some of the um, must-dos, which is unplug before you stick your fingers in this. So there it is, delicious mayonnaise emulsified and not green. So I just made some mayonnaise and I'm going to make some tartar sauce. We're having fish tonight for dinner. And I love tartar sauce with my fish. So this is the mayonnaise. It's 
can see our videos out there on how to make mayonnaise. And I just plop a bunch into a bowl. And I have some um, relish that I've made. It's There's no sugar, no sweetener. It's a, a dill relish. And so I just take some of that. I don't know specific amounts because it's just what whatever looks good. Now this looks like it's going to be a good amount. Mm, yeah. I have actually made this and brought it with me to restaurants because all the tartar sauce you're going to get in restaurants is going to have a lot of sugar in it. Um, so this is going to taste perfect with our fish. If you want it a little more spicy, I made some jalapeno relish. You could put some jalapeno relish in or you could put some um, horseradish in. Now when you buy horseradish, make sure the horseradish does not have sugar in it. It's really hard to find horseradish that does not have sugar. And some people actually prefer um, cocktail sauce with their fish. And I have a cocktail sauce recipe which is really good. I, I'm not making it now, but um, it's really good. We'll put the link down to the cocktail sauce. And this is easy tartar sauce for your fish.